And welcome everyone to an NABC chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by South Carolina State's Murray Garvin. And uh, Murray, uh, you've got the John Thompson towel over your shoulder. And I will tell you that I think it's one of the best things that we've seen from the NABC, from coaches in general, in terms of honoring one of the greats, a great, uh, an iconic legend, uh, someone that I thoroughly enjoyed talking to over the years. And we will all miss him dearly um, as a huge vacuum without Big John in our sport. Um, I wanna to go to the genesis of the towel, um, where it came from and, and how you thought everyone embraced it across the country. Well, you know, for me, um, the opportunity to honor Coach Thompson is first of all, minute to what he did for college and what he did for student athletes. We had, we had a meeting with Coach Ewing with Pat Ewing. And he talked about the influence of Coach Thompson. And when I say we, uh, we have a Zoom call monthly called In the Room, and it's all the head Division I uh, African American coaches. And Coach Ewing talked about this uh, with us in honoring Coach Thompson when the NABC got on board with it. And I opened the box in the locker room. I had no clue what it was. And the NABC had purchased towels enough for my entire team. So we opened it up, we told a story and I gave the guys a history lesson of who coach John Thompson was and, um, and who he is to all of us. I showed them a video of coach Thompson we listed all the players, the Hall of Fame players that he coached. One of my assistant coaches we played for Horace Brodnax and coached with Horace Brodnax. So the influence on our program is immeasurable. And I'd like to tell this story, Andy. The first time I saw Coach Thompson, I was a 10-year-old kid growing up in Kentucky. Now, you know as well as the rest of the world, that Kentucky basketball is as big as any basketball program when you are a native Kentucky. Well, 1984, the final four, the Warriors absolutely destroy my favorite team. And there's Coach Thompson, an African-American male leading an all black Georgetown University um, basketball program and that was the first time I ever saw Coach Thompson. And I never forgot it. Never forgot that moment. It's so hard to put into words, but what, when you think of him, what, what is his legacy to you? Just dignity. He, he stood for so much. Um, I remember watching Big East battles and, you know, he just stood up for his players and he stood up for what is right. And he wasn't afraid to speak truth to power, you know? And uh, I always admired that when I heard the stories about what he did for Allen Iverson, what he did in the local DC area about really telling the locals to leave his guys alone. And he took a stand and he met with these people and he told them, were off limits. I mean, I've always respected that. And the admiration that his former players had for him is something that I strive for as a coach every year. And that was because they knew how much he cared. It didn't matter how tough he was because they knew that he cared and he loved them. So they were willing to go fight for him night in and night out. And I always respected that. So also, what I think is so uh, just, you know, uh, among many legacies, as I said, the towel is symbolic, but white, black, it didn't matter. Every coach wanted to wear it because they respected him. Um, he was beloved by them, intimidated by them at times. Uh, <laughs> what did you think about the sort of the universal acceptance of honoring him? I thought that was pretty cool. You know, I just, just what this year has brought in college basketball, I believe is such a sense of unity that maybe wasn't there prior to this year. This year has made our industry, I believe, more cohesive because we're all 
with the same problems right now. And I just truly believe when I turned on the TV, my game was canceled that weekend. I had it planned out. I had it in my bag to travel, and we were going to wear it as a coaching staff. I thought it was going to be really, really cool. It wasn't just going to be myself. My entire team was going to have their towel for that game. And we took a picture I put on social media that all of our guys were holding their towel. And just to be able to talk about this man to the this generation of college basketball players, you know, sometimes adversity pushes you to a great moment. And the death of Coach allowed all of us to educate this generation of basketball players about the monumental person and the influence that he had on the game of basketball. So you mentioned the group in the room. And look, we lost two iconic figures in the last year, Big John and John Chaney. And when I think about those two, and Nolan Richardson, who thankfully is still with us, um, you know, they were, and I, and I think about the iconic uh, civil rights um, leader who just passed away, Congressman John Lewis, talking about good trouble. And right. they didn't mind getting in good trouble and right. speaking their mind. And so the opportunities that still need to come for black head coaches, black assistant coaches to get opportunities, to, to not be a token interview, to, to get the search committees to really diversify the hiring pool. All these things still have to happen. But among your group, how ready is everyone to sort of pick up that baton when needed to speak your mind and to create that good trouble? I, I believe the industry is more ready than ever, uh, especially for African-American coaches right now. You know, you have the leadership of Leonard Hamilton. You have, you know, what Lavelle Moulton is doing at North Carolina Central is admirable. Uh, even the light that he's shining on, the plight of HBC. Uh, we can go on and on. Shaka, um, Mike Boynton at Oklahoma State, you know, uh, Dennis Gates at Cleveland State, back-to-back -back coach of the year, you know, in his conference. The list goes on and on. Sean Woods at Southern University, you know, uh, I could go on and on and I would be, I can't mention everybody because right now it's just popping in my head, but I believe we are all ready to step up to the challenge. And this is something I think, Andy, that is not reported enough. We've been doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just, we hadn't had a coach here lately that has had major success on the national level, you know, Coach Hamilton was ready. I firmly believe that Coach Hamilton was ready to win that national championship last season. We just need someone to get back to the big stage and to shine a light on the success that African-American head coaches have had. I think last year, I think we might have had maybe eight guys that were their conference coach of the year. And um, we'll just continue to do what we can and you know, just kick down the doors for opportunities for African-American males to get into the coaching business. And then I also commend the start of the McClendon uh, Academy, you know, that's going to open the doors for minority coaches. So there's been a great effort. We just got to continue to pursue it. Uh, we just got to continue to, you know, like Martin Luther King said, the content of your character, not the color of your skin. And once we get to that motto of together we win, I truly believe that, not just in basketball, but also in society. And I just look forward to the day that your opportunities come based on the content of your work and the character that you present as a coach. And I will just leave you with this. You didn't mention his name, but he may be the national coach of the year and, and talking about getting a great opportunity, embracing it and running with it and excelling in it. And that's Jawan Howard at Michigan. Uh, Absolutely. You know, yes. uh, I, I, again, there's so many guys that are doing so well right now. I think Coach Howard has done up there at Michigan. It's been fantastic. And what a story he has from the Fab Five to probably Coach of the Year. Now, when he was a member of the Fab Five, I bet nobody ever thought that he would be the National Coach of the Year. You know, there was a lot of people that didn't like the Fab Five. Right. You know, but... Uh, Kudos to what he's done up there. Uh, I believe he's done an outstanding job. I had the opportunity to use 
closed meeting with Jawan, and he's an even better person. And he made this statement, and I'll never forget it. He said, guys, I'm going to do a better job of getting to know other college coaches. You know, coming from the professional ranks, he, you know, he hadn't interacted with a great deal of uh, college coaches. And he told us that he was going to make a better effort of staying in contact and getting to know more of us and uh, talked about that he had for college coaches. So, you know, I, I'm really happy for his success up there in Michigan. Well, Murray, you're doing great things down at South Carolina State. I wish you nothing but the best. Stay healthy and uh, hopefully you can finish this season on a high note. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you.